Cool. So these are these are classical things, maybe in our little subfield, right? This idea of recovering and detecting, and that there's this uh, detection recovery gap uh, for some problems. And this is a, a sort of new problem we've called counting, right? So it's another testing problem. Cool. And so one way to sell this story is uh, with the phase transition diagrams. Another way to sell the story is uh, I think that there's some really nice combinatorics going on under the hood, both for um, uh, sort of testing problems and, and uh, recovery problems, which are great. So let's, let's get started. So uh, the planted dense matrix, so the model will be uh, thinking about at the moment is planted dense uh, submatrix, right? Uh, and so we're gonna have additive Gaussian noise. And the idea is we just have um, some vertices, uh, which will be in our community, which I've denoted with this sort of blue dot, and each is going to be independently in the community with some k on n probability. So we're expecting the community to be sort of approximately size k, right, out of our n. And these ones, we give them a slightly raised mean. Okay. So the algorithmic questions you uh, could ask, right, are sort of to determine, um, so if you're given either uh, a sample from this model or a sample from the model where you don't have a raised mean, you could determine which one. Uh, you could try and uh, re uh, recover something. So perhaps uh, try and get an estimator over a particular vertex, whether or not it's inside the community and uh, counting, which we'll uh, talk about in a sec. So the, um, these are sort of the existing phase diagrams and I've, I haven't really uh, cited your properties, right? So there's, there's a, a lot of work um, went into these uh, two, two diagrams. And um, yeah, so the idea here is you have uh, some sort of null, right? So everything here is normal zero one. Here you've got a raised mean on a little bit of it, and here you've got uh, recovery. And the really nice thing, right, is that these are not quite the same. So there's these regions where detection is easy and the recovery problem is impossible, and also where it's uh, there's evidence of hardness. And there's two different types of evidence of hardness. There's some reduction type stuff, and there's also uh, low degree hardness. Oh. So basically, we want something where the sum test would fail. Um, so we want to, instead of having one planted community, we want to have m planted communities, such that the, the total uh, sum is the same as in the one planted community case, right? Um, and so if you think about how you would do that, right? So you, now we're going to have uh, the vertex label. So we still want the, the total size is going to be approximately k, right? So um, and if you wanted equal size communities, right, that would mean that you would place each, each vertex into one of these sort of M color classes with probability K, like one on M times K on M. Yeah. Okay. And so you would get this. And so you notice that the sum is correct, right? So each of these things will give you one on M times this uh, lambda K squared. Okay, so the sum is gonna be the same as if we just have one planted community. And the idea is that we, we are really gonna be interested. So we're gonna say counting say is telling the difference between um, so in the most basic case, just having one uh, planted sum matrix or having uh, this situation where we have n communities. And so we don't want the trivial thing to work. If they had the different sums that were like different by a constant factor, the trivial thing would work and it would be easy in that whole green region where the sum test works, right? So this is why we've set it up this way. And so, um, yeah, and we get uh, the same, the same diagram basically. So, uh, in the case where, say, we distinguish this uh, one community and two, it's the same uh, as the the phase diagram for recovery, which is maybe surprising, right? Like, it's a, it was easier to detect communities, uh, like to detect the presence of one. One thing like show existence of uh, communities and now we're saying that well actually it's not easier to just count them you don't have to recover the communities you just have to count um, and so uh, what's our formal statement so to say it formally so uh that most of the work in this paper went into the low degree bounds right so showing that uh no low degree polynomial works and so by Low degree, this is this idea, right? This uh, conjecture maybe in, in uh, the thesis of um, Sam, Sam Hopkins, right? That we consider that if, if we have a, 
a low degree polynomial where low can be up to log n size, so it covers spectral stuff. If that, if that works, then we consider we have a um, working algorithm. And anything higher we'd consider too slow, right? So, uh, and by working, we mean that we want this uh, difference in mean to overcome this uh, fluctuations, right? So in this situation, so we've got two, two different uh, problems. For example, it could be uh, the situation where uh, we just um, have, uh, sorry, I've, I've gone back to the graph case here because these are the dodgy slides, but yeah, so you could have either um, sort of no planted structure or you could have this one or you could have this K and one, for example, and um, you want that uh, when you have um, your graph or your matrix structure sampled from one of these, then uh, your polynomial is going to be high in one and low in the other uh, with a bigger gap than the, the difference in the square root of the variance, right? Okay, so this is what we mean. And so under this, this is where we prove hardness, right? So um, we have, so I'll state it uh, in this, the simple case of uh, counting one versus M first. So here we have reasonably tight results, right? So what we say is that uh, there is an easy test. So the easy test in this case is we sum up the diagonal. So we made the, the sums of the whole thing uh, match, but then the sum of the diagonal, the more communities you have, you're going to get like M lambda times this K versus having only lambda times K. Okay, so you have a degree one test. Um, uh, whenever whenever uh, sort of that count is uh, highly concentrated enough, right? And Otherwise, we can show uh, hardness here. Yeah. Right? So the actual formal problem is you're given, you know that you'll be given one of two samples. One of them will have n communities, and one of them will have one community, which call it the counting graph. Right? And so it's a testing problem. Yeah. So maybe to make it a little bit closer to counting, uh, it actually all goes through if you actually have m communities for some different m. And so this all works if the that now then you need some stuff about either the max of the two numbers or the difference, but if those are of the same order, then it might be. Here, here we're talking about the, the sorry, uh, the binary model, right? So here we have um, uh, some more parameters. Okay, so I, yeah, sorry. so this should be an S, right? So now what we're interested in is, um, uh, so here, here you're going to reveal edges with probability uh, Q plus um, MS. And here it's just going to be uh, everything is uh, like an Erdős. So you sort of got this background Erdős Reni random graph with probability Q. And then uh, here you have some sort of higher probability. And you have to be careful, I guess, this is not greater than one. But that's, this, is, this is a model uh, in the binary case. And then uh, we also know know some things but here, here the story is a, a little bit different so here we we don't have any diagonal entries right so we set i guess i should say here that we set uh the diagonal uh we say there's no self loops right so this is whenever u and v are separate vertices we reveal the edge with these probabilities and so when you do that then uh you get the following right so if you take a signed triangle test uh this is our this is our um test statistic that we use um yeah, and you'll see, so here the dependence on M is not, not strong anymore, right? So uh, it's still open what the correct dependence on these, these two Ms are. So perhaps some sort of, yeah, there's a, that's it's still open. Um, and we also have this extra condition here, um, which says that the uh, expected degree in the planted structure is large, right? So. This is the expected degree of the expected planted degree of the vertex and planted structure. We also want that to be large. And so um, uh, the nice thing is, okay, so uh, getting slightly about the points on M and D, but these are these are the right thresholds uh, in terms of uh, being the same as recovery. So here, uh, for the recovery uh, in um, Alex and Slil's paper, they also needed this condition and some sort of condition. Great. Yeah, so I want to talk about this uh, reduction because I think it's really nice. So um, the idea is that um, basically our proof that it's it's hard to test between these two problems can uh, give a new proof that recovery uh, of a single block is, is hard, right? So 
why is this interesting? So normally, maybe, I mean, if, if detection and recovery had the same thresholds, then you could use uh, whenever it's hard just between the having one block and zero blocks, right? If that was where, if that was hard, uh, um, whenever recovery was hard, then you could maybe use that uh, in your reduction. But for us, that, that has a that has different balance, whereas uh, this testing problem does have the same sort of structure as this, right? So then it makes sense actually for this to have a more complicated testing structure, uh, testing problem. Um, so it's harder to test basically. Um, and then we can use it to prove hardness of this algorithm. So where we want to prove it, right, is uh, where recovery is, is hard. So that's this line here. And so we're allowed to sort of assume this. This is where the algorithm would be useful. Okay, so the idea is we're going to be given uh, one of these as input. So either uh, the one or two. So in this case, we can really restrict to this like one versus two case, right? Because we, we know this is hard in various regions and we, what we want is a, uh, okay, so we have one of these, we don't know which, we can apply the algorithm. So we're imagining the algorithm recovers in this situation, right? So we know that if the input is uh, sort of our H naught, then the algorithm returns the right thing. Okay, so we get this. The annoying thing is we have no guarantee about what happens in, in the situation where this is the uh, input, right? So then the algorithm could return sort of anything, right? It could return any K by K block, perhaps an empty one. You sort of imagine maybe it would return the one with the planter structure. You know, so I've drawn a few options here. But we do have the guarantee here. It's gonna return the right thing and here it returns something else. Okay, and so um, now you've got this K by K block, you want to do some tests. And so one thing you can do is calculate just the sum of the block. Okay, so in the situation maybe you're expecting, so if there is just one block, then you get this sum, right? And otherwise, um, so we've normalized it, right? So the sum of the whole planted structure is the same. Um, so if you don't pick up all the planted structure, you're gonna get a lower sum, right? And this concentrates quite, quite well. So anywhere here, you can sort of imagine you're getting very close to these values. Um, yeah, so you can, if the sum, is bigger than sort of what it's meant to be minus a little bit, then you must be in the situation that, uh, so in, in H0, you're in this situation for free. In H1, you now know that you're pretty close to this uh, picking up the planted structure, right? You might have some sort of like epsilon. Cool, and then once you've got, once you know that you're vaguely in the right area, then you can calculate the sum of the diagonal of the K by K block. And that's going to distinguish it for you, right? Because um, the diagonal in your original case is only going to be lambda k, whereas uh, the diagonal, um, if you've picked up most of the planted structure in the two community case, is going to be like almost two lambda k. So you can threshold uh, on the sum of the diagonal. Oh, yeah. And this is just saying, yeah, you did, did need to do both tests, right? Because sometimes you could, if you, the diagonal of, say, this. Uh, which is a subset of the, uh, the two communities. If you give it one community have two, then you would have this sort of like uh, the right sum of the diagonal, even though uh, as if you're in this case. Nice. Okay. And so now I want to talk a little bit about um, maybe the, some of the proof techniques because uh, I think it's it's really nice. So um, you, you end up defining these um, uh, these things, right? And so these will eventually be. Uh, uh, random variables, which are to do with uh, the probability model P and the probability model Q, but uh, everything we need about them basically holds sort of for formal polynomials. So you can imagine that you've got a bunch of variables which are indexed by sets, another uh, bunch of variables which are indexed by sex and sets, and you can recursively define this, and so you get these sort of nice calculations, right? So if if your um, probability spaces are exchangeable, then all you care about is sort of the structure of the graph. You don't care actually which uh, which edges are in the set, just sort of like how, how they relate to each other uh, in, in a sort of a graph, which is similar to what Sleel and Alex had. For Sleel and Alex, they had things which turned out to be actually cumulant. So ours are not sort of obviously cumulant. We'll see maybe sometimes they are, but um, so this is the, um, the non-recursive definition. And somehow it, it feels a little bit like cumulants, right? So uh, if you, 
if you forget this this first term so usually in, in cumulants right uh, you'd have the sum overall tau which are partitions of your set and minus one to this the number of parts in tau minus one and then you get a tau minus one factorial and then you take a product over uh the, the expectations over just sort of like uh your random variables which are in which are indexed by the parts so each of these properties we do actually use in the proof right so we use things like if you've got um so you're sort of thinking about these things as graphs right so if the edge sets are a disjoint and uh, our formal A's are multiplicative over these uh, and our B's are, then we get that these R's are uh, multiplicative over these uh, things. Okay, so you, you um, basically we get some more complicated R structure than you might hope. You would sort of hope you would get cumulants in some way, in which case then uh, instead of instead of being a, a multiplication, you just get zero whenever you have disjoint sets. And we don't have that. We have the like next strongest thing, which is that it's multiplicative. So we sort of don't have to worry about disjoint corrupts. If you have this and you don't necessarily know that these things are multiplicative, but if you assume they are, then you get that the, yeah, so like the R's are multiplicative. Um, you also get that if these things are, if you have a set, set of these things such that these a, a and B values are zero, then you get out that uh, there's some sort of like um, closed set, so the set of forests, for example, when you delete edges and stay a forest. So if that's true, then you get that these R's are zero there. Um, yeah, okay. And so maybe we should say how actually they relate to the set. So this is the formal definition, right? So here I get this, we care about this situation precisely, right? So it's say additive Gaussian noise. This is the only way when these R alphas make sense. Okay, so we see this, and these R alphas are a function of the planted. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so for any for any subset, we just uh, we can index the set like this, right? It's the product of every every edge in that set. Um, yeah. So often we only care about the um, the graph structure of these things, right? We do care, so you, you don't just care about the size of the set, you sort of care how the um, entries are related in general, because these are eventually going to be the expectation over these things uh, in the two different model schemes, right? So you, you sort of care about the graph structure. This is this. Um, yeah, so then the A's and the B's are formally exactly this, right? So if your so I guess um, we're thinking mostly of the submatrix, not a graph. Sorry, but you so you're you're given your graph, um, or your sample, your um, your matrix like this, and then it's a function of the planted bit row right, in both cases. Yeah. Okay, and so yeah, this is the the two ways you sort of um, define it either recursively, so you have to unpack it, or non recursively, it's maybe a little bit grosser, but it looks it looks like this. So this is uh, this is a story, and we have to bound the sum of the squares of these R alphas eventually. So one one more property we use. So this gets back to your question about um, how we get the corollary of the binary case, uh, and it's not just thresholding. But what we can say is that uh, yeah, somehow uh, what we care about is the planted structure. If we can if we can uh, the planted signal, sorry, if we can shift that by some constant. Then these these R's don't actually change, uh, and that, that helps us uh, work it out. Yeah, and so here I wanted to show another property, uh, which is like these are not quite cumulants, but they're nearly cumulants, right? So you say you have some uh, there are sort of three different problems going on, and you can either have so the this plant structure, or this plant structure, but you imagine they're independent. Okay, this x hat and x tilde. And then if you define the plant structure, which is the sum of both of them, then uh, the, the advantage you get, so these, these R, RGs being larger, sort of thinking is helping us uh, tell apart the, the two models, and somehow it's a nice convolution of these uh, the ones for the individual problems, okay? So if these, if these were cumulants, again, you just have a sum of RG of one and RG of the next, but they're not quite, we have this nice issue of but discuss a little bit how it relates to the uh, the thing that's going on with um, 
arts and skills paper, right? So um, advantage in core, uh, this, uh, this core, these are, the idea is that if these are large, you can tell the things apart and if they're small, you can't, right? And in both cases, when you have additive Gaussian noise, these are, we have, we have proofs that sort of follow, you turn the same handle, right? And you get that, uh, so Alex and Slil had this and we have this, right? Um, and then if you, if you unpack the definition of what everything is, so maybe I've told you a lot about sort of ad infinitum what these R alphas are and they have some sort of nice ish properties and are very nice. Um, what was really nice in Alex and Slil's case is you've got these cumulants, right? Except it's cumulants over maybe something sort of an interesting set, right? So here, if you're looking at uh, this K alpha, it's the cumulant over which random variables. So the ones indexed by everything in alpha, but also the thing you're trying to estimate, right? So in that case, this was like the community membership of say vertex one it was uh, literally what the, the paper was about, right? So this is, um, that. okay. So, and then it's this, uh, cumulant of, uh, of these. And so to remind people what the definition of the cumulant is, that's this, right? Yeah, so maybe one, one thing that's nice in the special case, okay, so let's say, um, all right, so when, when you're thinking about a recovery problem, um, uh, let's say you're trying to, sort of the recovery distribution is this, right? Because we have to make it one of our distributions. And then, so formally, if, if we, if you have some um, function X, which is just a function of the planted structure and it has this property, right? Then these two things do reduce to being the same, okay? And so, because here it's sort of maybe a little bit hard to see, sorry from for all that's going on, but um, here we get mostly the same terms, right? So we mostly, the two things are in terms of these expectations of Q of some X alpha. And so in Slil's uh, and Alex's paper, right? They have this, sometimes your, uh, you also look at the set together with uh, uh, this, this X, right? Well, that's, that's, that's the magic that lets them get cumulative. Yeah, exactly. So basically, so if, if this, this, um, this likelihood ratio, right? If, if it really exists, right? Then our thing, although it's not a cumulant over these variables, it is when you add this as a random variable. So in our particular case, so it has to be that the, the ratio of those two things has to exist in the planted structure. For, the, for us, it wasn't actually true this time, right? But you can imagine sometimes it was. And then you're saying that it, it sort of makes sense, right? You're saying that the testing problem is estimating this ratio. So the open problem is, uh, well, it was in Slil and Alex's paper, but I think it's super nice. So we have this, uh, uh, okay, so just thinking about the low degree verse, uh, where that's possible or not, right? So here we have this, uh, but somehow, um, and here we had this, right? But somehow this was kind of cheating, right? Because we did a sum test. So if you just make sure the sum matches, you get a little bit closer. Uh, and so you get this diagram actually, that it becomes, uh, it's not easy, right? In all of this region, uh, as when you sort of uh, compare against a null, which has zero mean, the slightly raised mean, means it's a little bit harder uh, uh, somewhere else. And I think, and they also have a version where they uh, get second moments to be correct and push that line a little bit, um, but not all the way, right? So it'd be really nice to have some H naught, which is not obviously community structures, right? So somehow we, we, fooled, we fooled things by, uh, we couldn't tell this apart from some other bunch of communities, but if you design some different H naught, which doesn't look like a bunch of communities. And it was still just as hard to tell apart from this one planted community. I think that would be really nice.